hot enough for you? I realize this is a podcast and you could be listening at any time of the year. So if, say, you're listening on a day when it's cold out, first of all, I'm jealous. But I will tell you that uh, the day that this podcast came out, which is Tuesday, August 27th, 2024, it, it was like 90 degrees outside and humid and gross. The worst kind of weather for a big guy like me. Anyway, give me partly sunny and 63 any day. Hello, my fabulous friends, and thank you for listening to 15 Minutes with Fuzz. My name is Fuzz Martin, and this is my show about positive things happening in and around Washington County, Wisconsin. This week, we are talking about Fiesta Latina. I have two great guests in the studio with me today, Maria gutierrez Garola, the executive director of Casa Guadalupe, and Jesse Plummer, their community outreach specialist. They join me to talk about Casa, their newly expanded Fiesta Latina celebration, and many ways that you are going to have such a great time. And with that, here are 15 minutes on Fiesta Latina with Maria gutierrez Garola and Jesse Plummer right here on 15 Minutes with Fuzz. Okay, before I get ahead of myself, Casa Guadalupe was first featured on the show back in Season 2, Episode 75, and now we're on Season 4, Episode 122. So can you please give us a brief overview of Casa Guadalupe and how the organization supports families and individuals in the Washington County area? Yeah, well, thanks for having us. So we recently expanded our staff, which has allowed us to expand a lot of our programming, which is amazing. And we focus on serving primarily the Hispanic community in the Washington County area. What we have found over the last year with a whole new staff and a bigger team is that our services are definitely needed farther out than Washington County area. So we've been seeing an influx of people coming from surrounding counties to come see us. And I'll add to that that we've also expanded our services out to the Afghan community, and oh, sure. we've just kind of branched out, and who needs help, and let us help you. Yeah, so our focuses are on education programs primarily, and we are a resource center, but our primary focus is youth education, health education, and adult education. Very good. And Maria, I checked LinkedIn before we started this podcast, and just to be sure. And it's been a year now, right? Since you took over as, oh, yes. as executive director. <laughs> How's that been going for it's, you? It's been going. As I said, every day we're pretty busy. So clients will come in throughout the day, which is beautiful to see that mm -hmm. they're coming in getting our services. We're located actually here in West Bend. But since I started, we were able to branch out into Hartford. So we have a second location. So we sure. haven't fully announced that yet. So you're our first oh, announcement of that. So very good. yeah, so we'll uh, notify the community um, to hopefully come join us out there when we do our launch for that. Great. Where, where will that location be? Um, so we're located um, under um, Redeemer Lutheran Church. Okay. So we're fortunate to have the lower level where Help Corner used to be. Sure. So we rented out the space there. Yeah. And Washington County, I mean, it's, you know, it's a, a normal sized county, but the from West Bend to Hartford can be a kind of it's a hike. A drive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and especially for uh, individuals who are just maybe getting started in our community, yes. uh, transportation can always be one of the the factors that people need help with. And oh yeah. And going from you know getting the services you need in, in West Bend is probably a barrier for some, right? Exactly. And we're trying to break down some of those barriers. So to it just kind of fell into our lap, this whole building access. So it really was a great piece for us to add. And we're excited to be able to break down some of those transportation barriers for our community um, that we know exist. Perfect. So. And Jesse, you are the community outreach specialist. Can you tell us what kinds of things are you responsible for in your role at, at yes. CASA? Yeah, so thank you for having us yet. And so at CASA, my job is mainly helping out with partnerships with other organizations, with other agencies and other companies to create awareness of a culture, help with fundraising, help a lot with the events. Mm -hmm. So like Fiesta Latina and our fundraiser for scholarship funds, Noche de Baile. So that is my main job. But as you know, with uh, nonprofits <laughs> yeah. and uh, being bilingual, we definitely are busy. So I'm a certified instru uh, interpreter, and I get to use that quite a bit at Casa Guadalupe, which is something exciting. Wear a lot me. of hats, yeah. So I do help a lot <laughs> in, in different areas. It's needed. But my main role is events and partnerships with 
she's, she's definitely our jack of all trades. I'll say that. <laughs> so she actually recently too took on getting certified for ordained ministry. Yep. Oh. So she married one of our clients just yesterday, actually. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so, Excellent. Yeah. So that was pretty neat <laughs> to see. Oh, very good. That's really cool. We're here to talk today about your annual event, Fiesta Latina, which is coming up on Friday, September 20th and Saturday, September 21st at Regner Park. And for those who are familiar with Fiesta Latina, when I say those dates plural, that might be a shock, right? Because this is the first year that you're having... Two Two days. days. Yeah, that's amazing. So So I can't do that without the staff. I'll say mm -hmm. that out loud um, here. And um, I'm very fortunate to be able to bring this festival essentially to West Bend for two days. It's technically one and a half because Friday is a shorter day. Sure. We're trialing it and hoping that we can eventually expand into three days. Oh, excellent. So what inspired you to make it a longer event? So... One day just isn't enough. So one day isn't enough with these events. And I love our culture. I love the cultural awareness that we're hoping to bring this year and just overall the entertainment. So we actually have also featured coming this year some of our students in our Mm. programs. So they have their own bands, uh, vending items and things like that. So we're looking to kind of give back to the community in a big way with our educational piece and things like that. So all funds received will go back to all of our educational programs. So I think having an extra day is going to add more support to us so we can continue those programs. Very good. And I'll add to it that so basically bringing Fiesta two days, Friday night is going to be a uh, very nice time for a couple, so friends going out. We're going to have live music, drinks, yep. and some vendors. So it's going to more of a going out and hanging out kind of good, scene. Good but date enjoy- night kind of. Yes. yes, date <laughs> night, friends night, you know. And then Saturday is going to be a family-friendly event where everybody will have fun. So we have a full day packed with entertainment for the kids and also for the adults. So. That is a really good mix. So I think adding that extra night for people to go out and enjoy the cultural with a little more freedom, you know, that'll be fun. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So Friday is more for adult attractions and uh, Correct. and Saturday is more of that family friendly attraction. Yep. So can we talk about some of the specifics on that? What kind of popular attractions are we going to have this year and how do they celebrate Latin culture? Yeah, so Friday is going to be filled with lots of good bands, and then we will also have great food. We have a bunch of food trucks coming in. I think we have six so far. Great. And then beyond that, we also have some good drinks. So that'll be your Friday Friday event. And then Saturday, we're super excited this year. Something different that we haven't done in years past is we're focusing more on the kids' zone area. And we actually have a stage set up where there's entertainment from 12 to 6 all day essentially with different forms of entertainment. We're bringing in a magician. We're bringing in animals. We're bringing in different kind of aspects to the park. And then we'll also have a aerial artist coming in, which is different. And they'll be dancing to music of our culture. So, oh, very good. and then obviously we'll still have the bounce houses and games. And then we'll have a a pepper eating contest <laughs> and we'll have a, a grito contest, which is something different this year. So that's a Hispanic cultural tradition. We typically see that during Hispanic Heritage Month, and it's just people literally screaming, but in a manner that's <laughs> how we do it. <laughs> Mariachi style. Mariachi style. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, do, do one of you want to uh, give us a shot? Oh, God. <laughs> I can do it without encouragement. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I just uh, you want, are you sure your ears are okay for that? Um, I, I mean, maybe I, we are. We are at my office, and I did not give any of my employees a warning. Uh, they may. They might run in. They, they might, might run happen in. Uh, real quick. Ready? Yeah, ready. Go ahead. I love it. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. I did turn my headphones down. Just there you the go. <laughs> Jesse, that was really cool. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Uh, anytime, anytime. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, um, you guys will have different like kinds of dance performances as well, right? I saw like ballet and some stuff on there yep. too. So we'll have bringing me back the Ballet Folklorico, Sones Mexicanos. They actually come from Chicago. So okay. we're super excited to have them back this year beautiful dresses, just, you know, embracing that Latin culture. 
And then we also will have dance instruction. So if you want to learn how to dance, we will hopefully have some people there that can teach you. Will <laughs> so. they be able to do that in one day for me? <laughs> uh, we're going to try. We're going to try. We'll no worries. Everybody's included. I mean, Everybody can, yeah. can get the moves going. I mean, yep. a couple of surveys. So you know, right. right. We could teach you belly dancing. We have a belly dancer coming in this year. <laughs> yeah. So, so we do have a, a, a belly dancer yeah. and her group, and they're coming with Latin-inspired moves and Excellent. music, and they'll do that. And to add on to what we have Friday night, we'll have two live bands. One of them is going to have some instruments that they're going to be playing, like drums and such. And and the other one is going to be a fun um, northern music from Mexico as well. So, okay, yeah. Yeah. And then one of the cool things we're bringing this year is we're going to play a Mexican bingo. So it's Loteria. So we're going to sell cards quick. Bingos go really fast, so it'll be a fun game with the crowd that we're hopefully going to get enough participation and people want to play so right. throughout the event. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. How is Fiesta Latina designed to be a welcoming and inclusive event for all people in our community? Yeah, so the main purpose of Fiesta Latina is to highlight the Latin culture, but also embrace it and share it with everybody. Mm-hmm. So it has a trade. Hispanic people love food and music and dancing and sharing the, the culture with everybody. Mm-hmm. So just right off the bat, we are, you know, open it to everybody. We are proud to share that with everybody, all the positive things that the Latin culture yep. brings to the community. Mm-hmm. And it is fun. Who doesn't love really good, tasty food? Who doesn't love good music? And it's a really wonderful connection. Our goal, besides bringing awareness of a culture and our organization, and all the good things that we do is also to feel to help people feel like they belong, mm-hmm. right? One another. So Hispanic community belonging in the Washington County and surrounding areas. And also people who come and experience that, right? It's very traditional, very uh, authentic. Mm-hmm. And um, we want to show that. So that is we're opening with food and drinks yeah. and music. So right at the bat is just, hey, come join us to the party and yeah. and come to Fiesta. O- opening the doors to the heritage and, and, and welcoming people in, right? Yep. And there's something for everyone this year. So mm-hmm. we really utilize the space at Regner Park. So every, I believe, inch of it we have measured <laughs> <laughs> and we mm-hmm. know it's going to be used. Oh, great, so. great. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. And I will I would like to add that Hispanic Heritage Month is happening in September. So if people are familiar with Fiesta but they are surprised that it's a different date, it is because we're trying to honor and make sense to have some special event during Hispanic Heritage Month. So that's what one of the other reasons why we wanted to bring it to this this date. Make the change. That's right. It, it used to be in May, May right? Correct. Okay, that's right. Yep. Okay. I thought I yep. thought it was earlier in the year. And again, this year it's September 20th and 21st correct. at Regner Park. In what ways does Casa Guadalupe engage with the broader community beyond events like Fiesta Latina? How, how else do you engage with the community? So we've been really fortunate to have been invited to a lot of organi- organizations and agencies in the community, some of their events. So we love to always collaborate and be together, mm-hmm. essentially. And then beyond that, we also offer different kinds of camps for the kiddos over summer. So we have summer Spanish camps, and then we also have Spanish for adults. So <laughs> you're welcome to take those classes. We do have one starting in September as well. So that'll be something fun coming up. But for the most part, any chance we get, we're more in the community as much as possible now. Maria was smiling when she said that because I was afraid to roll my R's when I was <laughs> saying Gutierrez Corolla. Yeah. Did I say it a little bit better? Uh, You're yeah. getting, there. I'm getting there. I need help that the little owl in Duolingo won't give me. Right. Uh, um, mm. uh, Fiesta Latina is obviously something that people love around the community, but in, in what ways um, ha, or how has the community responded to Fiesta Latina and what are you most excited for with this expanded format this year? So I'm most excited just to see more people coming to see what we have. I'm ex- I'm excited to see hopefully more younger kids there enjoying all the festivities that we have as well. Families coming our goal is really to make it a more family uh, fun day for mm-hmm. people. Um, by having free admission, we're hoping to break down some of those financial barriers as well as um, charging a nominal. Uh, it's very small fee, a minimal fee for kids games. So $5 sure. a kid, you get the games for six hours. We're hoping that that um, is affordable for families. So 
beyond that, though, I'm just excited to celebrate the culture and just be a part of the day. Great. So, Jesse, what's been the most rewarding part of your work so far at Casa Guadalupe, specifically in engaging with the community? Should I leave so she can be honest? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Chiz out. <laughs> um, okay, so I Remember, I'll... this is being recorded. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, personally, this is a very rewarding uh, job. And I will say that because it, in my personal experience, is a full circle. I am an immigrant. I came from Venezuela many years ago, went to school. I did not speak the language. So it was, it's been a long road, but it's a very fulfilling road that I am just blessed to have gone through. So I understand a lot of people directly, what they have gone through, and how you can better yourself when you come to the United States and belong to these wonderful communities that are very welcoming and work here and just be part of mm-hmm. an organization that also helps all, the, all of those that are starting out or that they are here, but they don't know where to go. They don't know resources. They feel alone sometimes. You know, it's difficult to leave your family and your homes. In my experience, I wanted to do it because I wanted to be bilingual and I wanted to experience that. But many other people don't have that choice. It is something that is a very hard choice mm-hmm. to make. Mm-hmm. And for me, the most rewarding part is just to be able to belong to an organization that helps out and is full circle for me because now I'm, I'm the give an end and I can help others and guide them through, you know, for them to know that it's possible to better yourself and belong to a community and do good. And just, you know, it's a positive experience that everybody can have. It just takes the right resources and knowledge and information. So I'm happy to be here helping with that. So Great. Well, we're Mm -hmm. glad to have you in the community and appreciate all that you do. Looking ahead, how do you see Casa Guadalupe's outreach programs growing or evolving past? I mean, you're, you're obviously growing in, in Hartford now, but how do you see this growing into the future? So I think that having the bigger staff allows us to provide more programming and more uh, offering of times and days that we can do the events. But essentially, I see the passion that we have in our staff. And that alone, I think, is going to drive the outreach that we're going to have within the community, the community at large, and just overall. I think, too, just from a leader's perspective, I'm so fortunate to have the staff that we have and all that they're doing to make everything successful. So for me, I have high hopes for our future and that we'll be more present in the community and people will know who we are when we say Casa Guadalupe. (laughs) Excellent. Excellent. Well, if someone wants to get involved or participate, volunteer, lend their talents or services, how can they get involved with Casa Guadalupe? Yeah, so they can go to our website or they can contact any one of us directly. We are on social media. We're on Facebook more often than anything on Facebook. (laughs) So you can go to Casa Guadalupe Education Center page or for those of us in the community, we have an Amigos uh, Casa Guadalupe page as well. And any of those pages, we're constantly posting volunteer opportunities for ourselves and other agencies in the area as well. So. Great. Yeah. And I'll add to that. uh, We're always welcoming to uh, have conversations with organizations, businesses, and other agencies that are willing to uh, partner with us. And, you know, we can help each other out. We love that. We have really good partnerships right now, but we're looking forward to new ones, you know. So people who are willing to embrace the culture and just see uh, what the positive things that the Latin community has to bring and has to offer to Washington County in general. So Excellent. And just to piggyback off of that, volunteer needs right now, we do have Fiesta Latina coming up. So mm-hmm. two-hour shift, you can come in, get a cool shirt. Excellent. And then also our, our programs are starting in the fall. So we're constantly looking for reading tutors. We're looking for guest speakers for Dream to Succeed students, which is our college life and career readiness program. And then we have a lot of English classes going on, so we're always looking for teachers. So if anybody's interested, come see us. All right. Very good. And what's your website URL? Um, It's www.casaguadalupeonline.org. That's a mouthful, I know. (laughs) Very good. You'll find it, though. Yeah. Find Casa Guadalupe. (laughs) Okay. Again, Fiesta Latina is Friday, September 20th, and Saturday, September, September 21st. 2024, Regner Park, free 
admission. Yep. And I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you for all you do for the community. You're welcome back anytime. Just just hollering and thanks for coming in the studio. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you so much for having us. Yes. Thank you again to Maria Gutierrez Garola and Jesse Plummer of Casa Guadalupe for joining me on this week's episode of 15 Minutes with Fuzz. Very cool that they're expanding Fiesta Latina to two weeks this year. I hope you get out and enjoy that on September 20th and 21st. As always, if you have an idea for a guest for this podcast, feel free to let me know. Please do so. Reach out. Suggest a guest by going to fuzzmartin.com slash guest. That is fuzzmartin.com slash guest. You can always email me fuzz at fuzzmartin.com. That is fuzz at fuzzmartin.com. New episodes come out on Tuesdays, and you can always find all of the episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or, you know, fuzzmartin.com. Thank you again for listening, and I will talk to you next week right here on 15 Minutes with Fuzz. Fuzz.